Okay, folks, welcome to Sunday Night Synthesis. I'm Dr. Lawrence W. Moore. I'm here with my assistant, Crafty. This beautiful pig that you see in the photo right there is sitting right next to me. We're in a time crunch trying to get this episode out, so we're not doing an intro filming. Uh, we're starting right here. This is about tape loopers and and uh, sample looping in general. This is a topic requested by a viewer who saw one of my episodes of Sunday Night Synthesis, I believe the end of series one, maybe beginning of series two, let me see. Here we're gonna see if we can find the uh, episode he referred to. Oh. That's the early stuff as it goes on. Here we are. This episode here, it was episode 11 of series 1. And uh, he said, I want to make this patch. And also said he was going to send me a patch to take a look at. But basically, if you watch this video, I just demonstrate this thing. This was just before I started the initial release of LWM Rack. And... Uh, these were two tape looper modules and I had a functionality of being able to scrub through them to drop playback at any point in time change the speed of playback which also adjusts pitch and so forth and this never got released because I've changed LWM Rack around I will be making a tape looper module for LWM Rack the new versions but since that will be a couple weeks, I decided, hey, I'll do a Sunday Night Synthesis for you so you can see how the stuff works on the inside. And so that's what we're going to be doing. So, <clears throat> away we go. So let me... Minimize this and show you here. I am actually going to upload a zip... <coughs> of these examples and it'll be a link right under the uh, episodes video on uh, my website so it'll be LWM music Sunday night synthesis just where you saw me browsing but this is series 3 so it would be series 3 episode 1 and there you'll find a zip file of these now I have a bunch here because I've been experimenting with it I never was quite happy with the uh, original version that I made but as I experimented more I saw that there are uses for these different types and so I thought I'd share them with you because you may want something different than what I want but anyway let's illustrate the concept here this first one is uh, basically a good demo demo of how the concept works I'm gonna zoom in and explore this patch with you basically over here those of you that are been watching lately I've kinda of been using the same routine as far as how I initialize patches I have a load bang section here with a bang in case you wanna while I was debugging in case I wanted to load this stuff or execute this stuff without reopening the patch but basically this is where the sample rate gets determined and sent out so anything that's a receive of dollar sign zero dash sample rate will receive the sampling rate and of course it turns on DSP here first thing then over here this is a mechanism that allows me to record into the table here that's named dollar sign zero dash sample and so I'm going to do that right now. It's a toggle, so you pretty much toggle on to record and then toggle off to stop. And so it just recorded what I said there. Toggle on and off. And basically it's executing when it's on. The select box here will bang out the first outlet and that triggers a few bangs. Basically um, what it does is it opens the file that it's going to record to sample.wave and then it starts recording to it 
the ADSC, ADC tilde is going into right SF. So here's the input of my signal, my headset. It goes into right SF where it gets written to this file that was opened. And then when you turn it off, uh, it bangs out the zero outlet here, which is this one, the middle one. And that triggers these bangs to happen. First one is to stop. And the next one is to, it uses a symbol box here so that I can use a dollar sign zero dash sample as a symbol for the file name. And it says read dash resize sample dot wave, which is the name of the file. And then dollar sign one is the table name. Excuse me, I said file name before, but this is the table name. And so this dollar sign one gets replaced with this here, which is this table. So basically this file gets written to this table and it resizes the table to the size of the file. And then sound filer here receives that command and does it. And then it outputs the table size here where I put that into a send dollar sign zero dash sample size. It gets received right away right here. I could have just connected this up but the thing is I thought I might have other things that receive this so I made it uh, you know like a wireless send and then here that the receive receives that and uh, basically what it does is it takes the sample rate and this trigger bang float basically makes this function happen even though it's coming through the right inlet but the sample rate comes in here and uh, it gets divided into the sample size which gives us the time in seconds this is its duration 4.749 and that gets sent as dollar sign zero duration dash s meaning duration in seconds okay now this is the playback mechanism and up here this is just a level control I could put that down there I guess well, I'll leave it there whatever but anyway, this controls the level, and down here is the amplifier where it receives right here, dollar sign zero dash level dash send. That's the output symbol of this slider here, which is a range of zero to one, and becomes a volume control for the amplifier here of the signal going out. So that's all it is, is volume control. Well, we have a toggle box here to start playback and stop it. So when you toggle it on, it'll start playing back. The select one zero bangs out the one outlet and that triggers some bangs to occur. One hits Metro, which starts it. And Metro is running at 1000 milliseconds. So every 1000 milliseconds, it sends out a bang. And um, that's once every second. A second is 1,000 milliseconds. But before that happens, this bang gets thrown through first. It's this zero that then, as you'll see, is going into the right inlet of the float box below, right here. This is basically a counting mechanism. The float box stores floats or numbers. Of course, when it starts, it a zero gets banged into its storage but doesn't come through until Metro hits it with a bang which happens like a as soon right afterwards so right afterwards it bangs that zero through it comes out the outlet into the left inlet of plus one basically the number one gets added to it and then it goes right back into the float through the right inlet where it's stored and doesn't come out until the bang comes through again from Metro. And so this basically makes a counter that counts up every second. And then what happens is that counter goes through a Moses here. Moses, whatever it receives in its right inlet, and it's receiving duration in seconds, it determines if whatever's coming through is equal to that or less than it. If it's equal or more, it comes out the right outlet. If it's less than this number, it goes out this one. So if it's less than the duration, I want it to keep going. And if it soon reaches the duration number, right here, the duration, I mean, the number will come out here.
but it triggers things to happen. It triggers things to go back to zero by banging the zero through. And then it also lets the float go through here so it can complete the count. And right here, what happens is our number in seconds, because that's what's being counted up as seconds, gets multiplied by 44,100, the sampling rate. If you choose a different sampling rate, it gets received in here. And so you can have it work at other sampling rates. So once it gets multiplied by that, basically it's counting 0 to 44,100 each second. It goes 0, 44,100. 88,200 uh, and then the next one above that uh, it's like 132 uh, forget it <laughs> you know whatever three times 44,100 you don't have to do the math but anyway it goes through the pack object here as the float over a hundred milliseconds that gets sent to line where basically it goes to each number which would be 44,100, 88,200, over 1,000 milliseconds. So basically these are being sent one second at a time. Well, line basically draws line segments between it. So it does zero and all the numbers in between up to 44,100. Then all the numbers between 44,100 to 88,200 and so forth. So it's basically reading this table sample by sample all the way through at the right speed because it's basically reading at the sampling rate. And that goes to tab read here where it actually reads the samples, outputs it as an audio signal, and of course the amplifier here allows me to change its level. So let's hear this. Gotta turn up the volume. Forward, and then toggle off to stop. Toggle on to record and then toggle off to stop. Toggle on to record and then toggle off to stop. Toggle. Okay, so I stopped it there. Just bangs the uh, zero through. Although, now this is just to illustrate the concept. Uh, when I stop, all, actually, all it does is it hits this stop message, which stops Metro. So it sits wherever it's really at. The zero gets banged in when you start over. Oh, look off toggle on to record but you'll hear a little backtracking because wherever you stop is probably not at zero and so wherever it stopped in the count here at two seconds it rewinds back in this line object here basically it would be at like 88,200 and then it would receive a zero and be shooting us back over the count of one second so you hear it rewinding over one second's worth of time. And when it loops, you also hear that because it's going back to the beginning again. This zero is getting banged when Moses, you know, reaches the duration. It bangs a zero, and that's what happens. Now, some limitations of this. Well, you get the uh, rewind sound. Um, and this doesn't have any mechanism to change the speed of playback and I didn't put in a mechanism to be able to pick where you want to start or to scrub through the audio that all comes next in the next examples but right now it's just showing you how the mechanism works using a counter to loop an audio recording and so that's what we're doing okay so let's go on to the next one where I have a few more advances. Oh yeah, one other thing. Since this counts up in seconds and its durations is in seconds, you inevitably have this point where it'll play through here but it's not so accurate at finding the end because its counter is only in seconds. It'll keep looping and everything but it may cut some things off, for example. Okay, but let's look at the next example here. Okay, now a lot of this is the same, that's why I explained everything thoroughly before. Um, except we have uh, two other things that after recording the uh, audio, this thing does. It takes your duration in seconds, multiplies it by 10, and that gives us a duration in deciseconds, which is basically a tenth of a second. So in each second, 
you know, if you were counting in deciseconds, basically it'd be like each second divided up into ten. So you're seeing like uh, the tenth of a second counted there. And so it finds out what that duration is in deciseconds by just multiplying by ten. And then here, the sampling rate gets divided by ten, and that gives us what I call the multiple. Because over here, what we're going to do is our counter now is going to run in deciseconds, so it's going to be a faster count. You see Metro has 100 as its creation argument here. That means every 100 milliseconds it bangs, 10 times per second. In other words, every decisecond. And so now this counter, which is really the same, is running at a faster speed. And thus it gets multiplied by the multiple here rather than the sampling rate. And the multiple, and that's why I call it a multiple, because it's everything gets multiplied by it in the sample count. This multiple, as you see, the creation argument, 4,004, no, yeah, 4,410. It's basically one-tenth the sampling rate, because it's basically now counting up in smaller chunks. It's 10 per second, so there's 4,410 samples per 44,100 samples per second because we're doing a tenth of a second. So we're just counting faster and this just compensates by using numbers that uh, that allow that to happen. So let's hear this. Okay, let's record this now. Now counting in deciseconds. Okay, and now I'm going to put this up and press play. Okay, let's record this now. Now counting in deciseconds. Now, okay, I'm not let's sure. record this now. Now counting in deciseconds. I'm not sure if you can hear that or not, but this playback has a little bit of flutter in it. Somehow using this kind of counter and Moses in this way, um, I did some experimentation to find out what it is exactly. But it seems to be just counting, using metro banging at 10 times per second, somehow creates a little flutter or instability in the playback. Okay, let's record this now. Now counting in deciseconds. Okay, let's record this now. Now counting in deciseconds. It sounds like this little fluttering sound in the words that I'm speaking. It's not very obvious, but it's there. Um, but nonetheless, if you want to get a more accurate playback to the, the to the end, this gets closer to the actual exact end than before. And plus, now the rewind is quicker, <clears throat> so it's a quicker rewind back to the beginning because we're our counter is as, is acting faster. Oh yeah. Incidentally, also, you see down here in the pack going to the line, now it's 100. So anyway, let me show you the next one where I went further with this. In this one we have largely the same construction but I put in speed control here. It load bangs 100 because that's the default. This is really the same as the last patch except now on the right inlets of things like Metro it'll receive speed and so in this number box I could type different speeds and so 100 milliseconds if I change that uh, it will be adjusting the speed of the metro the length of the pack well the length of this number here which is like basically the length of the line segment that the pack message sends so you see the zero dollar sign zero dash speed is here as well as here and that and these two need to be the same number for smooth playback and so when you change the speed though it'll actually make playback quicker or slower so let's check this out by recording a new sample put up the volume play so let's check this out by recording a new sample so let's check this out by recording I can hear a the new flutter sample. in there. So let's check this out by recording a new sample. So let's check this out 
150. Let's try 50. So let's check this out by recording a new sample. So let's check this out by recording a new sample. So let's check this out by recording a new sample. So let's check this out by recording a new sample. So let's check this out by recording a new sample. So let's check. So now, you still have that rewind thing when it loops. By having a pack and a line here, you're going to get that. But I think in the next one is where I demonstrate ways of taking that out if you want to get rid of it. And so here in this example, it's the same as the last one, but a little bit more busy here. Um, this is the speed control, same as the last one. But now we have something here. I made a stop function that does a few things. Basically, it will turn off our amplifier here. You see a zero gets banged through whenever the amplifier gets turned off. And then what happens, this is when you press stop. Or when it loops around, it stops first. You see here, out of Moses, it has a bang here that basically says, OK, do the stop function, and then another bang here with a delay to it, a delay that is the speed time plus an extra 100 milliseconds. And what it does is then it goes and hits the play here. So it starts it up again, but basically after a delay, because what it needs to do first is hit the zero through, turn off the amplifier. Then here it stops Metro, I believe. Oh no, it doesn't stop Metro. It sets it to zero, which means it goes back to zero. And that goes through the left inlet now. So that zero goes through rather than just being stored, waiting for Metro to hit it. And then uh, another bang goes here where it uh, turns on the amplifier below because it goes back to zero. Basically, this is the rewind, but it does it with the amplifier off so you don't hear the rewind sound. And then it turns on the amplifier. Uh, this stop doesn't have a delay on it, so this actually happens right after this. So, you know, it turns off the amplifier, stops Metro. I should have had that ordered over here to be more obvious. It delays a little bit. 50 milliseconds, that's the actual time at which the, it goes to zero here. The pack down here is at 50 milliseconds. So it it's a smooth 50 millisecond ramp to shut off the amplifier. Then here it goes back to zero and, well, actually before that it stops Metro. Then it goes back to zero. Then it turns on the amplifier. And this is set in a way, this delay is set in a way that it's enough time that the rewind sound should have passed. And we're back to zero, ready to start up again. And so the amplifier goes on, and then it plays, starting up, I mean, it starts up Metro again. So basically, it's like a shutdown of the amplifier um, so that the rewind sound doesn't s sound. So let's hear this without the rewind sound. Turn up the volume. So let's hear this without the rewind sound. So let's hear this without the rewind sound. So let's hear this with that little at the beginning is the sound of my lips. <laughs> Actually, it's a it's saliva. It's not like a rewind sound. So if this does successfully get rid of the rewind sound, although I did hear the flutter in there. You know, using this technique, you get some flutter. Now here, this one is an example. I say as an alternate to that one. This one um, we're going to hear now. Oh, the last one I didn't change speed, but it did have speed control in it. This one is just a slightly different version. Let's check out this slightly different version of Type 3. Let's check out this slightly different version of Type 3. Let's check out. Yeah, this this, this version basically has this whole stopping mechanism here, but it allows the rewind sound through. So I made a version in case you want to have this good looping mechanism because this is actually better than the early ones. 
because now actually when you stop it goes back to the beginning automatically so when you start up again let's check out this let's check out let's check out it starts right from the beginning so it's good to have this either way it's just in this one it allows the rewind sound to come through in the one before it allows it doesn't allow the rewind sound to come through so that's the difference between these but the thing that bothered me is they still had that flutter sound but nonetheless let me show you the last of this type this first type here that I'm calling one tape looper that's the one that's running in uh, seconds. These are all running in milliseconds here. Not milliseconds, deciseconds. And you know, you'll see in this type 4 what's a little bit different with this. Let's see what's different in this type 4. There's more stuff going on here. I'll explain it in a little bit. Let's just hear it first. This type 4. Let's see what's different in this type 4. Still have speed control Let's here. Let's see what's different in this type 4. Let's see what's different in this type 4. But this is still the same. Let's see what's different in this type 4. Let's see what's now different. Now we have in a scrub mechanism. Four. Let's see what's different in the see what's different in the see what's different in the see different see different let's see what's different see in this type. Let's see what's different in this Let's see what's different in this type. All four. right, so what we have is a Let's scrub see. mechanism. Basically, this slider, when the when you record the sample in, its duration in deciseconds also gets sent to the scrub slider here. See, it's being sent to dollar sign zero scrub receive. That's a receive symbol for this slider, and it's receiving range zero dollar sign one dollar sign one is the variable that gets replaced by the duration in deciseconds. So it makes the range of this slider zero up to the length of the thing, however much it is in deciseconds. So that way this thing in its type print in let's see what's different in this type starts four. playing whether you like it or let's not see when you hit different that. in this type <laughs> But in any case, uh, basically you can click around and it gives you an accurate scrub here where you can find where you want in the playback to play around and plus you still have your speed control now the way this works is this scrub signal gets sent to dollar sign zero dash scrub dash send which is here and the way I set this up with the trigger bang bang float is the scrub does get sent out the float here goes into a float box to be stored and then part of the stopping mechanism is 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 putting that number through. What happens is here this bang bangs out um, a, the stopping me mechanism. So things actually stop when you move the scrub. And so it stops playback, shuts down the amplifier, lets you put in the float here from the scrub. And then it bangs that after one of the delays here, basically after the... Um, the amplifier goes to zero it does that in 50 milliseconds here it bangs the number through so it goes to that point in time and then it, this is where it turns on the amplifier again and then as the amplifier ramps up you're at this new place in time so it gets rid of the rewind sound so basically this is a scrubber that doesn't let the rewind sound come through it just puts in silence instead but it sounds pretty good let's see what's except for the flutter type 4 let's see what's different in this type 4 let's see what in let's see what in let's do let's in this type 4 see what's different in this in the see what's what's di see what's different in this type 4 Let's see what's different in this in this type type four or different in the see what's different see what's different let's see what's different let's see what, what's different see what's different type four and see what's different in this type four okay. let's see what's different in this type four so that's what this one does it's a silent scrubber now still there's that flutter in the playback all right we're getting to the point where that gets fixed but next 
there's two alternative versions to this that I made. I'll just tell you what they are and since I'm putting this up to download you can check what the difference in patching is. Slight adjustments here. Like in one of them I allow the rewind sound to come through on playback uh, when it gets to the end. This is a slight alteration on Type 4. And so let's hear it. Gotta turn up the volume. Yep. This is a slight alteration on Type 4. Yeah, this one allows the rewind between the end and the beginning. This is a slight alteration alteration on type slight al this is a and slight scrubbing. alteration on type this is a slight al this alteration is a slight alteration this is a alteration this is a alteration on type this is a slight this is a slight alteration on type so I made this one so that you know if you like the rewind sound it lets that come through you know and so let's see the last one here I don't exactly remember what this version is let me hear what's going on and so let's play back going on let me hear All what's right, going rewind. on let me hear what's going on what's going on hear what's going on let me hear what's going on let me hear what's going on Go here, what let me hear going on what's go let me hear what's going on. Let me hear what's going on. Let me hear what's going on. Alright, so this one yeah allows some of the sounds too. I'm not sure what's the difference between this one and the very last one. I forget. But, um, anyway, I have these different versions so you can try them out and see which one you like and possibly use them. Um, because sometimes you like sounds like that. It's like a glitch effect and it's kind of cool. And so I let some versions have that. Now, the very last thing. For those of you that have seen Sunday Night Synthesis uh, Series 2, Episode 10 on Granular Synthesis, you'll be somewhat familiar with this mechanism. Um, it basically uses a phaser here and this sample hold. Well, it's an object called sample hold tilde. And basically what happens is we have a counter here just like before. Default going in deciseconds, although you have speed control over here. But instead of Moses detecting when the duration's been re reached, this mod has the duration in de deciseconds. What mod does is as numbers come into it, whenever it reaches the number you put in through the right inlet or its creation argument, it goes back then to zero. And so it, it's a modulator. Basically it goes zero to the maximum that you set for it. And so when used with a counter, it basically is like a rewinder or go back to zero immediately. So you don't hear the rewind sound because your count goes back to zero and there's no line tilde with a pack object in here. Uh, the numbers coming out get multiplied by the multiple again, 4,410. But also what gets multiplied by the multiple is the phaser that's operating at a certain frequency. And this frequency is defined over here, oh excuse me, over here, so it does adjust when you change speed. Basically it is one second, you know, 1000 milliseconds divided by the speed that you set. When it's the default speed of 100 milliseconds, uh, the frequency is 10. And then, you know, it'll proportionally adjust as you change the speed of playback here. And so this sample hold kind of locks in somehow our counter and it gets rid of the flutter sound. And so it's a lot smoother before it goes to tab read. But I can still have the speed control. Here's the amplifier. I moved it down here. It was just up here before. I guess I could put it back where it was. That's where you're used to it being. 
Um, and it still has the scrub mechanism. The scrub gets fed in right here to the counter. In order to have scrubbing, you do need a counter. You can't use a second phaser over here, like in that granular example I had. Um, here the phaser is just a locking mechanism that kind of keeps this count on tighter. And so it gets rid of the flutter. But anyway, let's just hear it. Okay, so let's check this one out now. Turn up the volume. Well, that's another thing with this. This phaser keeps going, so the stopping mechanism in this does zero out the amplifier. So it does stop it when you press stop. It turns down the amplifier. And when it's on, it sends the amplifiers the slider's position again so the amplifier goes back on. But anyway, let's hear it. Okay, so let's check this one out now. Okay, so let's check this one out now. Okay, so let's check this one out now. And there it stops. So I can turn it on and off. Um, the little click you hear in there is actually my mouse clicker for turning on or off recording. Um, so that's not an artifact. But anyway, let's play. Okay, so let's check this one out now. You do have speed control. Okay, so let's check this one out now. Okay, so let's check this one out now. Okay, okay so let's check this one out now. Okay, so let's check this one out now. Okay, so let's check this one out now. Sometimes when you adjust okay, the speed, so you hear a little check this one out now. stuff happening. Okay, so let's check little this jumps. one out now. Okay, so let's check. I might this be able to find ways now. of smoothing that out. Okay, so let's check this one out now. But I find when you okay, move so this a little bit slower, you don't hear those. Okay, so let's check this one this out. This is now. also set okay, to so jump let's check this one on out click, now. so you can okay, do sudden so let's changes. Okay, this one out now. Okay, so let's check 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 this one out now. Okay, so let's and check I have this one uh, out now. It okay, low bangs so one into start, one out now. but you can hit one okay, here to so go back to normal. This one out Basically, now. one. Okay, so let's check zero to one is one the range of the slider. Excuse okay, me. Okay, so let's check this zero point five to okay, two so is the range of the slider. Now. Okay, so and then that gets multiplied by one hundred as the speed. Okay, so let's check this. So it's like scaling your. Okay, so 100 let's check millisecond this one out normal now. speed. Okay, so let's check this one out now. Okay, so let's check this one out now. Just in case you didn't hear that because it was playing my voice twice. Um, basically, this has a range of 0 0.5 up to 1 that gets multiplied by 100, and that's how it changes the speed. 100 meaning normal speed every 100 milliseconds or every decisecond. And um, load bang bangs a 1 in first, so that means the speed's 100 to start, and the frequency here is 10. But this adjusts accordingly. And the scrub works also. Let's check that out. Okay, so let's check this one, one out now. Let's check this one out. Okay, so let's check, let's check this. Okay, so let's, okay, so let's check, okay, so let's check, okay, so let's check this. Okay, so let's check, okay, so let's check, okay, so let's, okay, so let's check, okay, so let's check this one out now. Check this, okay, so let's, okay, let's check this one out now. Okay, so let's check this one out. Now, you hear a little artifacts when you skip around here. That might be able to be smoothed out with a mechanism like I had before in the other examples. If I had some trigger bangs here where basically it turns down the amplifier, allows the scrub number through, then turns back on the amplifier with some delays involved so that basically it'll get rid of the uh, any any artifacts by turning down the amplifier going to the number, then turning back on the amplifier. So it gets rid of snaps because of the sudden jumps. But then you hear gaps in sound. So you got to kind of like pick your thing. Do you want to hear like a silent gap or do you want to hear s artifact snaps? You got to pick one or the other. Um, if we put like a line tilde on it 
or something like that down here it would be difficult because this is already audio signal coming out so I didn't think of I'm not sure if there's a way of smoothing things out there might be with like a Dell write and Dell read you might be able to put some sort of smoothing thing in between but I didn't at this point so I'm gonna be working with this version and maybe touching up a little more and this is what I'm gonna put in the new LWM rack as a sample looper module so we'll have a granulating looper module as well as just a sample looper module in the new LWM rack system but anyway I did the viewer request so now you see how this stuff's built and the download will be on the episode page so you just go to my website lwmusic.com learning go to Sunday Night Synthesis Series 3 this is episode 1 and the download will be there alright folks I'll see you the next Sunday